Hi, I'm Cher Kaufman. I'm international artist and author of the Artful Mandala coloring book and the Ancient Alchemy coloring book and also a five-part series that is 10 minutes a day to color your way. This is joy and this is gratitude and these are part of a five-part series that's coming out but I only have two to show for you today but these are awesome. You should go check it out. Today we're going to do something a little bit different. It's based off of one of the meditative drawing um, lessons that I did from Mandalas and More, a meditative drawing and coloring book for mind, body, and spirit. And what we're going to do today is actually from a jumping off point from meditative drawing lesson number four. So if you are interested in learning how to do drawing from some of the things that we're going to get started with today, which is a personal uh, favorite topic of mine, which is clouds, then go check out at the end of this, you can go check out and hop on over. We'll put a little link there for you on how to draw some different types of clouds. I know there's a ton of different ways and there's going to be a lot of ways to color them. But today we're going to do a little bit on coloring clouds. Okay, so for today's lesson, what we're going to do is we're going to start with the drawings that we did in Lesson 4, Meditative Drawing. And I've got these two wonderful little basic designs here that I wanted to show you. This is, this is going to be a little bit of what we're going to create is this hint of color in clouds. And also we're going to have these uh, basic designs here and we can use color to kind of create or shift the change of movement within the clouds if it's not already built in through a swirly design that you can draw yourself. So what I did in the meditative drawing lesson number four was I created these little clouds here to get us started. And there's a bunch of different ways that you can add color. And I'm not going to go into, yes, you can just jump on in and just color them blue or pink or yellow or however you want to do. Because if you really want to learn different kinds of blending techniques for your colors, I highly recommend that you go watch the video, the 12 blending tips, because that will tell you a little bit different ways to incorporate layers of coloring that you can apply directly to this lesson here. But this is a little bit different in the sense that we are creating a hint of color, not necessarily coloring the whole thing, but you can if you want. In this case, we're going to do a little bit of what I call sort of suggestive color or allowing your imagination to fill in the rest. So for this here, I thought I would show you one of the ways that I really like to do um, coloring in this particular style here is I like to do sort of random spots of color. So what I have here is these little places that I call divots right here where the lines begin to kind of move in towards each other is a divot. And oftentimes in drawing, I relate to the divot on the out side and I'll do something of a design on the outside but oftentimes with coloring and sometimes with drawing the inside of the divot is actually kind of a neat little place to add something that's a little bit more unique such as this could be a divot here but we've got a built-in swirl and so that inside divot has something swirly that we can play with. So I'm not going to go too deeply into shade and shadowing, but we can have this sort of general idea if that we're going to pick the left side of a line, then we'll pick the left side of most of the lines to give some type of um, continuity of how our light is bouncing off of the things, or at least we want to give the illusion of that. So one thing that I am looking at is that I'm about to contradict what I just said and that I'm very interested in the underside of this place right here. And I'm also interested in the top side here. So the left side would technically be, you know, over on this side. I'm going to do the middle. And I'm going to put in a little bit of a darker layer of my pencil here because I'm going to use a, um, one of my... Um, solvent based solutions to create a blending effect and this is something that you can look at at the 12 uh, basic blending tips on the coloring pencil but what I'm going to do is I'm going to add just sort of some touches of color just sort of randomly I've got this idea that I like that these swirls are maybe a little bit in front so I'm going to create shadow behind I'm going to add a little bit on this side here and a little bit on this side here and I think I'm going to do a little bit on the underside And I really like adding a little bit of color to, I think, to some of these divots and a little bit of color here. And you'll notice I'm kind of going off a of feel here, not necessarily that I have a particular order or something that I'm um, creating a particular pattern for, but I do want to emphasize a little bit of the swirling action. So I am trying to make sure that I add a little bit of color on the outside of these swirls here. 
and maybe a little bit right here in this little spot. Okay, and that's all I'm going to add for this particular color here. And what I'm going to use for right now is a blending marker pen. So this blending marker oftentimes will have a nib base or a brush tip. And another type of marker will also have, I'll show you an example of this here, is a chisel edge and or another nib edge here. But I'm going to use the one with the nib, which is going to be the other side, because I'm going to be going into smaller places and I want to have a little bit of um, some concentrated uh, application of this alcohol base that actually is designed to kind of move a wax pigment. And so I'm going to use this to my advantage and create these little soft strokes and circles and just begin to feather this out in these little spaces here. So I'm basically taking the color and I'm beginning to move it in a way that's going to add a little bit of a wispiness to how this color was originally applied, which was just more of those straight lines, right? So I'm going to move this around here a little bit this way. And you'll notice as I begin to move this that one of the things that I'm a huge advocate for is rotating your paper, whether you are coloring or whether you are doing meditative drawing. And this is to keep it so that it is easy on your wrist, that it is um, uh, not something where you're putting your body into a weird position because as soon as you put your body into a weird position then you're not really concentrating on what you're doing anymore you're more concentrating on what is uncomfortable and then that's not so much fun anymore so you want to make it fun and enjoyable and relaxing for you so sometimes what i'll do is i'll do little circles to begin to kind of grab some of that pigment and move it out and sometimes, I'll show you an example here, sometimes you can go into one of the deeper, darker spaces and you can pick up some of that little bit of that pigment and add it to some place that doesn't even have any that's on the paper. That's kind of one of the cool things about these alcohol markers here is that they absorb some of the pigment in and you can use that to your advantage. One of the things that I also like to teach is that if you really know how one of your tools works, um, you can use the little idiosyncrasies or the things that most people don't like about a tool. You figure out how to work it to your advantage. So what I would say is if you've got one of these colors that you're working with here, you might not want to put blue inside of a, a yellow crayon. Um, it will change the color, correct? But if you are using it to your advantage to add color someplace on purpose, then you're using your tool in a way that is maybe a little different than you thought. Okay, so you can start to see that this is adding a little bit more of a wispy effect. It's softening these harder black lines and it's allowing your imagination to kind of fill in the rest. The imagination of, of the wispiness of the clouds. Rotating my paper. Now you'll notice if you're paying attention really closely that this alcohol marker with this particular technical pen is grabbing a little bit of that pigment. You'll notice a little bit of gray right there. In this particular case for clouds, I don't mind that at all. I don't mind that there's a little bit of gray that's showing up because clouds kind of have that kind of effect, right? They have a little bit of a, a shadow side that can be a little bit on the gray this gray side of the spectrum there. We're almost done with this. Now you can use any of the tips that you have learned in coloring. Anything that is used in the 12 basic tips, you can use any of those in this type of coloring. You can simply use pencil, you can use any of the other solvents. I just happen to like the way this particular uh, solvent moves the color. And I'll show you a different solvent in just a second, but this is one of the ways that I like to draw and color with clouds. Now, one thing I want to remind you on is that when you have an alcohol-based um, blender is that you want to go to another paper. You want to make sure that any pigment that was picked up on the end here is cleaned off by just rubbing it on another separate piece of paper. And it will get stained, and that's no big deal. As long as it's running clear, you're good to go. So. 
There's one example of coloring some clouds, and this is really fun for adding to a design that you might have already existing in a coloring book, something that you want to do something different to the background of. You can do something along these lines. Okay, now let's just show a different way that you can do. This is another example that we started in the meditative drawing class. And this one here, I've got uh, two different ways that I'm going to show this to you. One of them is actually using um, the same thing that we just did. So I'll just do one example on that and I'll use a, a darker um, pencil here is just by adding a little bit here just so that you can see the difference. So if I use my my alcohol based blender pen here you can see how it takes that wonderful little color and just kind of brings it outward it sort of softens that space I'm going to take this over here and make sure that it is oh, picked up a little bit purple okay and then once it runs clear I'm good to go Okay, now the other thing I want to show you is um, a water-soluble pencil that is often very popular to create a kind of um, sort of wispy or, or watercolor effect this way. And so we'll do this example on, on one of these here. And uh, this one happens to be um, a, a type of pencil that gets more brilliant and once water is applied to it. Um, you do want to be mindful if you're doing this in coloring books because coloring pages do not often accept uh, water-based um, applications very well. The paper just is not designed to be multimedia. But if you're doing something like a greeting card, if you're doing this something of a design on your own, this is something that you can certainly play with. So something that I've got here is a little bit of water. And I'm going to do, uh, this is just a, 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 a flat brush here. I'm going to dip a little bit of water in here, but one of the things I really highly suggest is that you take a paper towel and you want to blot out the excess water because you really want a damp brush, but you don't want a wet brush. And then you're going to just very gently begin to move this color. Okay, now for this example, I'm going to add a little bit deeper line just so that you can see if I add a little bit deeper color, what that, what that will do. I really like the lightness, but I want you to see something a little bit more visual here. Okay, so if I have a deeper color, I can begin to create curves that are not existing with the pen, but I can begin to do those with color by just doing soft little wispy effects and pulling the color. And this can take a little bit of practice and it, it may depend on the type of brush that you have. I may grab a different brush here and, and see if I like this one a little better. This is an itty bitty teeny 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 little brush. to be a delicate little wisp of color here. And this will give you more of that watercolor effect if you use these water soluble pencils. This one happens to be ink tense, and so it's going to get a little bit deeper in color than some of the other pencils do, which I kind of like that it has an intensity of color that it holds. But you can certainly see that using a alcohol blender will give you that effect without um, absorbing all of that liquid into your paper. I'm going to see if I can add a little bit of this to my pen. Okay, so I'm going to grab a little bit from this area here that has a little deeper pigment on the paper and use that almost like a 
like watercolor where you can dip into those little dry palettes. I'm picking up a little bit of the pigment here and just using that in a different area. Okay, so that's just an example of using a little bit of color to create some little swirly type things when you have an actual drawing that you're playing with or something that you've drawn an actual design is that you can use. Here's my example from my previous is that I actually did a little bit of a swirly action with my pencil and then just softened that with my brush. And then what we have here is an example of where you can imply. I'm going to do the same thing that I did with my original, which is I'm going to take a pencil and I'm going to imagine where the cloud might be. So I am going to take here and I'm going to just draw a little design here. And I'm going to imagine as if my cloud went this way and it had a little poof. And I imagine that it's continuing to go. And I'm going to do this. And I'm going to imagine and I'm going to imagine that it kind of connects. And so I'm just going to kind of create the illusion of where a cloud might be. And I'm going to use this alcohol-based marker once again. And I'm going to use this as a blender to soften the areas around these clouds. And what I'm doing is I'm doing these little circles on purpose so that they can grab the pigment and begin to move it outward. and create the impression. By just grabbing this pigment. And I'm going to use some of this pigment that is sticking to the actual alcohol blender and I'm going to create a soft little curve as it moves up here. So again, if you use the tool to your advantage, you can actually create some soft shadows by just continuing to move that pigment where you want it to go. Now this is not, this is not watercolor and so it's not going to move the same way but it's something that you can certainly play with to give the impression of a cloud as it floats in the air. And it's something you can add a little bit of whimsy to the backgrounds of your coloring and or do a whole uh, coloring page with just this all alone. And it can be actually quite fun and relaxing that way. So there's something else that I want to show you that employs some of the things that we've done with backgrounds and coloring. And it's using a template that you can create on your own. And so I'm going to show you a little bit of what I mean by that. So this is just a three by five card. You can see that here it's got the lines on the back, but what I'm interested in is just one of these sort of um, uh, designs where I used some scissors and just cut out what a cloud might look like. This is the piece that I'm going to be using. I'm not going to be using the cutout pieces where it has this part. This part is going to be something else. If you want to use this to outline something, you can have your own template and you can create it that way. But what I'm going to be using is the idea of a lot of things that we have used in some of our backgrounds and use that for a background by using this here. So let me show you. I'm going to grab my example so that I can keep track of, of what I want to show you. Okay. So one of the first things that we can do is we can do something that has to do with, say, eyeshadow. Now, eyeshadow comes in a lot of colors, and so that's one of the fun things about using eyeshadow is that you can create kind of that uh, sunrise or sunset type of an idea. Depending on the paper that you're using and the type of application, if you're interested in different ways to apply it, the eyeshadow, please go look at the coloring backgrounds video because that shows you a bunch of different ways to apply eyeshadow. Today, we're just going to be using the applicator that the eyeshadow came with, and the eyeshadow that I'm using is just literally from one of the dollar stores. It's local around me. So you use whatever you have and I'm just going to put a little bit of this here and I'm going to use this template here. Now what I'm going to be doing is actually drawing on my actual template and letting it kind of move into the paper that I am using. Whoops, I moved it. Oh, well there you go. Oh, that's okay. I'm going to use just that. 
And then I'm going to apply a little bit maybe over here. Part of the reason why you want to make sure that you are starting over into what I'm calling the green area of my template here is that it allows you to get a good edge. If you just go up here this way, you're going to get a little bit, well, you could play with it. Let's see. I just like the idea of that you are not um, having to follow a line that you can just sort of draw right on top of it this way. And I'm just adding a little bit more color right in this little area here so that there's this puff that begins to take place. Okay. So here's the layering of just a few eyeshadow clouds. So we're going to go through these pretty quickly. Okay, so the next little example here that you can see is I'm going to show you how to use a gel pen. So if you ha are familiar with the examples that I've used with gel pens, you'll know that um, there are different ways to apply them. I'm going to be doing the wet method here. So with the gel pen, what I'm going to do is I'm going to work in a couple different stages and I'm going to be employing my example of putting this in the adjustment that works best for my wrist. So I'm going to turn my page here and I'm going to do um, a gel pen right in this edge right here. And I want to add a little bit of a thick layer. And then I'm going to take, oops, I'm going to take this, um, this example here where I've got my paper towel. I'm going to dab out the extra water. And I'm going to do the same thing we did with the eyeshadow in that I'm going to pull the gel pen. Add a little bit more water. and give this a little bit of a wispy look to it. This one has a little bit of too much water on that, but that's okay. Okay, and then I'm gonna add some gel pen over here. extra water out and then I'm going to begin to move this and really with the gel pen the thing that you really need to pay attention with gel pen is you really want a gel pen that leaves a nice layer down you don't want to be working with a dry gel pen because as you'll notice here that this one is not as wet as the, some of the ones that I would like to have a gel pen leave a real strong layer with um, but it will do the job for what I'm playing with right now and then I'm going to go ahead and finish this here. Whoops, I just drew on my paper. That's okay. We'll see what that looks like. Now, the reason why I'm showing you this with the gel pen is if you happen to have a glitter gel pen that you want to add a little touch to in the background, this is a way to do it without actually drawing with the gel pen itself and just sort of implying some of that glitter effect because every time that you use the wet or dry method with the gel pen, you basically are moving that glitter around. And so this would be a way to apply a little bit of that glitter to the hint of something. And then you can use that as your final touch over something with pencil or anything else that's along those lines where you just want to add a little bit of layer on the top. Or you could use this as your baseline and then you can begin to color it in if you want to do something like that. Okay, so then my next example is actually one of my personal favorites of, I really like the way this particular one looks. And so I'm going to add this, um, I'm going to add this up here, I think a little bit. And I'm going to do a different color. I'm going to do orange. And so this one here, we're going to actually be using a solvent. And so a solvent that we're going to be using is Gamsol. And so that's um, something that's made to break things down. You can some, see some of my other videos that gives you a little bit more information on that. Now you can do two different ways with this. You can actually do this as an outline and you can begin to draw on this. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to draw on just slightly the outside edge with my pencil. And 
And this is for those crafty type people that want to do something that where you have to kind of make and create your own little thing. And this is a really fun one to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just gently leave that there. And I'm going to use Gamsol that I have in a little glass with uh, cotton balls. The cotton balls prevent it that if from this if we're to ever tip out or tip over, I'm not going to end up with a huge spill of a solvent. It's going to pretty much stay here, but I can still use this. It'll be contained within the cotton balls, but you do want to close this when you're not working with it. So one of the things that I'll do here is I'm going to use a brush. In some of my other examples, I've used um, different things to, to move the Gamsol, but in this case, I'm going to actually use a brush, and I'm just going to use a little Gamsol on the brush. I'm just going to cover that for right now, and I'm going to take my brush I'm going to do the same thing as we did on some of the other examples. And I'm going to begin to move the pigment onto the paper. Oops, I got cotton ball on my brush. Now, one of the reasons why this is probably one of my personal favorites is I really like the soft, gentle result that I get from this. I really like the softness that the Gamsol does with the, um, the pencil. If you are a watercolor enthusiast, this might be something that you would do maybe with your own watercolors, but if you don't, this is a really nice effect that you can get. You might notice that there's a little bit heavy uh, Gamsol in that one area. Don't worry about that. It dries. But it has this really nice, nice little sort of wispy effect that can happen. Um, let's see if I can do a little bit just right here. Just to add a little bit. Just sort of hint a cloud. Okay, so there's just sort of this hint of a cloud that's in there. And I'll show you an example that I did um, with this same pencil and the Gamsol here using, uh, you can see the actual template that I used. And this could actually be clouds, beginning of a sunrise or sunset, or it could even be something that is um, in the desert. Maybe perhaps it's uh, something covered up through sand. I mean, there's all kinds of creative ways that you can use your templates this way and use this as a base to get started with. Okay, and then the last thing that I want to show you is I'll do a little small cloud here. Is I'm gonna, before I move on, let me do my brush here. Be responsible about my poor little brush. It does such good things for me. Okay, is that one of the things that we did in the very beginning, which is using the solvent. And so let's, where's my, here's my pencil here. Is I'm gonna show you two different ways on the same one here. So here, I'm just gonna do the edges. And then here I'm gonna show you what happens if I do it as a trace, just so that you can see if you're curious what that looks like, okay? Okay, so here I'm gonna actually use the chisel tip of a blender marker. So there is if I use the template on the outside and begin to bring that on the edge. Here is if I use it here, directly on my paper. You're going to end up with a much harder edge for certain, but it's certainly something that you can play with. And again, it's going to really depend on the type of paper that you're using. And you'll notice that you can see a little bit of the uh, the Gamsol or the alcohol blaze blender, uh, blender there, but that's okay. That will go away. And you want to always, if you're using a blender, make sure that you are getting the pigment off and it will stain. Don't worry about that. As soon as it runs clear, you're good to go. All right, so this one's good. We want to make sure we close that up. Okay, so here are your different ways, just to kind of recap so that you can see there are different ways to play with clouds, different ways to move them into your backgrounds. You can do something where you're doing a hint of color. 
You could do something where you're creating an actual outline of something kind of poofy, or you can do something where you're using color to imply a cloud in the background there. So here are some different ways just to take a quick little look there of different things that you can do to add to your backgrounds or to enhance an image that you are already creating or maybe one of your coloring books, something that you want to do in the background that's a little different. Sometimes those white spaces can be um, a little daunting and you're not sure what to do with them. If you're not sure, go check out the coloring backgrounds videos or do something like this where you begin to add your own designs, allow your creativity to come on through. Thank you for joining me for this little lesson on how to play with clouds. I know there's a lot of different ways to color clouds out there and there's some that are actually more realistic, but at least this will give you a jumping off point and how to play and how to doodle. If you are interested in learning how to draw some of the basic uh, cloud shapes that we were doing here, please go hop over to the meditative drawing lesson number four. It's a basis of everything we've learned in lessons one through three, but if you're into coloring, that is enough information in lesson four to get you started to doing your own clouds in your own backgrounds or for your own uh, creations, maybe a birthday card or something along those lines. Until next time, I'm Cher Kaufman from the Drawing Desk. May you find more color in your day.